Hi everyone, my name is Piyush Sajdeva and welcome to another video in the series Namaste Google Cloud where I will be publishing GCP videos every week. In this particular video I will show you how you can perform operations on a GCE VM such as start, stop, edit and delete and how you can take disk snapshots and machine images and use them to provision new instance for disaster recovery and troubleshooting purposes. Please watch the complete video as we will be doing some knowledge checks at the end with some sample exam questions if you are planning for associate cloud engineer certification. If you are new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button below and the bell icon to get notified about all my upcoming videos. Without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, I have logged into my Google Cloud console over here and I already have a Linux VM running. So I'll go to my compute engine from this side to VM instances. And this is the VM that I have running. It's called test instance Linux. It has an internal IP and external IP attached to it. To make any changes to VM or to do any operations to this particular VM, you just select the VM using the checkbox right here. And then click over here to the three dots, which denotes more action. And then you can do a lot of operations from here. You can just create a start and stop schedule to save the cost. If you click over here, it will ask you different options like name of the schedule, description, region, start time, stop time, time zone, initiate date. If you leave it empty, the schedule will take effect immediately else it will initiate on that particular date and the time that you specify. Similarly, the end date and the frequency. If you are more comfortable with the cron syntax, then you can just enable this option from here, which says use cron expression and then click on submit. Once you are satisfied with all the changes. Okay. For now, I'm just clicking on cancel. Now let's go back over here again. And the other options that we see over here are delete, reset, stop, suspend, start and resume. Resume and start is not enabled because the instance is currently running and you cannot start an already running instance. It has to be stopped first. And suspend operation is not supported by E2 micro. That is why it is also grayed out. If you delete the VM, you will lose all the data that is stored in a non-persistent disk attached to this particular VM. Or if it has the option of delete disk enable, then persistent data will also be deleted. So make sure you use this option very carefully and with proper planning. Let's go ahead and make some changes to the existing VM. So for that, you'll go over here where it says name. You click over the name and then click edit. There are some configuration that cannot be changed once the instance is provisioned. For example, the name of the VM, the zone in which it was provisioned and so on. But there are some configuration that can be changed such as the internal and external IP addresses attached to the VM. So to change that, you click over here where it says network interfaces default. You expand this by clicking over here. And if you scroll down a bit, you'll see two type of IP addresses attached to it. One is a primary internal IP. Another one is external IP. There'll be two type of addresses, internal or external. So the reason why we are using two types of IP has its own purpose. Let's say we have a cloud storage over here, which would need access to this particular server. Let's call it CS. That cloud storage can access the server using its internal IP address. That means that internal IP would be internal to the GCP services. However, if there is any external application that would try to connect this server, let's call it EA. It will try to connect to this particular instance. It has to connect to its external IP because the internal IP is only internal to the GCP services and it cannot be accessed from outside. So if you click over here, now there'll be two type of primary internal IPs, which says ephemeral and static An ephemeral IP address is an IP address that doesn't persist beyond the life of the resource. For example, when you create an instance without specifying the IP address, Google Cloud automatically assigns that resource an ephemeral IP address. So in general, 
the ephemeral IP address is released if you stop or delete the resource. So once this server is stopped or terminated, ephemeral IP address will be changed. But if you use static IP address over here, it is persistent even if you stop or delete the instance. So it will be assigned to your project until you explicitly release it. So that's the main difference between ephemeral and static IP address. So let's keep it ephemeral for the primary internal IP and we want a static IP attached to the instance as an external IP. So I'll click over here and create a new IP address. This IP address would be static. Let's give it a name static VM IP. I'll hit reserve and this particular IP has been created for you. And then you click save. Now if you scroll down, you will see a static IP attached to it and the IP address is 34836653. Just keep a note of it. And if we go back, so I'll select the instance and then try to stop it. Let's stop the instance for now. Hit stop. All right, instance is stopped now. So if you scroll over here, you'll see that that particular static IP is still attached to the instance. In general case, when you stop the instance, that IP would be released to the pool. But this is not the case. Even if you terminate the instance, that IP will still be there for you to use. Now let's go ahead and delete this particular instance. So I have selected the instance already and I click over here, hit delete and delete. Okay, It says instance is deleted and it's removed from here as well. Now, if you want to see if you still have that external IP address attached to your project, let's open this in a new tab and you click over here, three dots and then look for VPC network and then IP addresses. And over here you see there is one external IP address which is named as static VM IP and this is the same IP address that we assigned. And it says in use by none. That means this IP hasn't been attached to any VM. And in the same way, you can reserve more external static IP addresses by clicking over here, reserve external static IP address at the top of the screen. To release this particular address, you select the resource and click over here, release static address. And this address will be released to the pool. But before doing that, let me try to create a new VM and show you how you can attach this particular IP to a new VM as well. So I'll hit cancel for now. I'll go back to my VM instances and I quickly create one VM. Click over here, create instance. Let's call it test VM. I'll put that in the same zone, US West 1. And then machine type as E2 micro that it is supported by GCP free trial usage. Then I'll go down a bit. Networking. And then select this particular option over here. Scroll down. External IPv4 address. By default it is ephemeral for both internal and external IP. If I click over here. Now this particular IP is visible in our drop down. So I'll select this and hit create. All right. So the VM is provisioned. And if we scroll a little to the right, you'll see the same external IP is attached to that particular VM as well. So now I go back to IP addresses. I have selected the IP address and hit release static address. To delete the static IP, hit delete. Okay, so the address is deleted. Let's go ahead and see how you can create a machine image to back up all the data stored as part of that particular VM, including metadata, permissions, configuration, and data from the multiple disks of that particular VM. So you go inside the VM and then click over here, create machine image or you can do that from this tab as well, which says machine images. So you could choose either of those. I'll click over here, give this a name, call it VM image one, select the source VM instance, 
for which the backup needs to be taken so there is only one vm running so i'll choose that set the location whether you want the backup to be multi-regional for high availability and disaster recovery or you just want it for this particular demo i'll just select this as regional and select the location from the drop down or just leave the default one select the encryption type and have a look at the advanced configuration which will have all the details of your vm image there are some things that would not be covered as part of the vm backup and those are local ssd data in memory data name and ip address of a vm right so please make sure you remember this point once you review everything you hit create and the machine image will be created for you and you can easily go ahead and create a new VM from that machine image. So the machine image is now ready. I'll just open the image and hit over here to create the instance from that image. Once you do that, it will still ask you to enter the name of the VM because as we have discussed before, name cannot be used as it was there in the source VM. So you can choose a different name than the test VM. So we'll call it VM test to verify other details as well. So you see the default region was selected as whatever it was there in the source VM and all the other configuration like E2 micro instance that we have selected. And if you verify everything is correct, you can just go ahead and hit create the VM. So this is one way to take the backup, but this particular method will cost you a lot of money because VM images are huge in size and you will be charged the per GB storage cost of the machine image for that particular region. So when you don't want to overspend on VM backups but still wants to backup critical data for various purpose then you can use disk snapshot which is just the backup of that particular persistent storage attached to the VM. So let's go back to that VM. It doesn't have any additional disk attached to it, but it has a boot disk attached to it. So we can create the backup of this particular disk using the snapshot. So from the left side, if you scroll down a bit, you'll see disk and snapshot. So you go to disks. So you could either create a new disk from this particular disk or click over here actions and you can create a snapshot. Give this snapshot a name. Let's call it snapshot test. Select the source disk for which the snapshot needs to be taken. Select the location as regional or multi-regional. Verify everything and hit create. Hit over here, hit refresh. And now you see the snapshot was successfully created. You go inside the snapshot. You create the disk from this particular snapshot and attach that disk to a VM instance. And then your VM will be cloned as per your needs. Right? If you go back, you'll see another option which says create snapshot schedule. To make sure you are regularly backing up your application and your VM instances for disaster recovery and maintenance purpose, you could also create a snapshot schedule from here. It will have all the other options like uh, snapshot storage location, schedule frequency, start time. You can also set a lifecycle rule to auto delete the snapshot after a certain number of days. By default, it is 14, but you could put any value over here. So if you put 30, it says after you delete the disk that use this schedule, delete snapshots older than 30 days and it will delete the snapshot after 30 days. Right? And uh, basically that's it. And if you hit create, this schedule will be created for you. Let's do a quick knowledge check. Let's say you have an application that looks for a proxy server on 10.1.0.5 as the IP. You need to deploy that proxy server on GCE and the requirement is that you don't want to change the IP. What should you do? Whether you should reserve the IP as an as static internal IP and assign it to proxy server. Whether you reserve the IP as static external IP and assign it to proxy server. 
or you would reserve the IP as ephemeral internal IP and assign it to the proxy server. If you know the answer, let me know in the comment section below. And if you need more details on this, then also please let me know and I'll be more than happy to help you out. All right, guys, that's it for this particular video. I hope you would have learned something from it and you would have enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section below if you are facing any issues or if you have any doubts related to these topics. I'll be back soon with another GCP video. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified about all my upcoming videos and I'll see you soon with the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day.